What's going on, my lovelies? So with fourth anniversary fast approaching i am pretty sure we are going to get like a huge wave of new players and everything so this video is just basically focused on players who are new new to the game and i am just trying to help you guys out on things about this game to ready you up to play it so here are 10 mistakes i made as a beginner and in hopes that after watching this video you will be a better more pro player i guess and you don't make the same mistakes that i did okay so one of like the most important tip i would like to give out and it was something that a lot of us never did when we first started is linking your account so in order to be able to link your account, because like once you get out the account and if, you know, you delete the game or whatever, you will not be able to retrieve your account back. So this is why it is really important for you to link up your account. So you can get there by heading over here to the three little dash and click on linking data. So you have a choice of linking your account to Facebook, Google, or um, Apple ID if you are on iOS. Also, I forgot to mention over here, the um, transfer ID, you can use that as long as your account isn't linked to any of these. Keep in mind that a transfer ID can only be used once every 24 hours. So once you use up the transfer ID, you will not be able to use that again and you have to wait 24 hours to generate another one of these transfer IDs. So it's always best to link your account to Facebook, Google account, or an Apple ID. Okay, the next tip that I would want to give is the exchange shop. When I first started this game, I didn't know you could go into the exchange shop to exchange for fragments of like units you have pulled. So to get there, you can go ahead and press on this exchange button. This one right here, you have to pay for that. And this is for Bounty Fest characters. So if you want to, you know, buy the special rush, you can go ahead and exchange in here. Otherwise, if you're free to play, the exchange shop is in here. I would also like to add, if you do exchange for a character that says unlockable, you can do that. But I wouldn't advise you to unlock the character unless you pull another one of those because otherwise it would just be a waste of fragments and everything so do not unlock a character even if you have enough frags unless you have pulled on them already third mistake that i have made as a beginner is not crafting up metal so metals is pretty like important for like your character support and your character also to be like a little bit better in playing the game or to be a little bit stronger so if you go over here to character upgrade and click on metal, you have the option of crafting metals. And always, if there is an event going on, always make sure to craft the event metals first and foremost. Focus on that the most because these event metals are most likely not to return. Once you craft them, go ahead and click on the upgrade button and upgrade them. There are three upgrades that you can possibly get for these metals. And... The first upgrade takes about 4 hours, the second upgrade takes about 8, and then the third upgrade is about 12 hours unless they have an event that lowers the upgrade time. So these medals over here, let me show you. So for the first upgrade, the first trait, it's not possible to get a 3 star trait. The second one, if you get lucky, here's all the percentage of the upgrades that you can possibly get on these medals. Um, usually event medals have a higher chance of you getting a three star trait. And the third trait you get, as you can see, the percentage does go up. So that's why I say focus more or less on event medals because it's easier for you to get three star traits on them. So how do you get a nine star medal? You may be wondering, and this is how you do it. So go ahead and click on the transfer trait tab and it should bring you to this screen over here. Once you fully upgrade a metal, so you can go over here to the transfer metal and click over here on the overwrite. I'm not going to do this one down here because it's already a three star trait. I can press overwrite right here. Keep in mind that you can only transfer traits 
from the same type of metal so you if you get like a three star trait on some different metal you can't transfer it to this metal over here so what i do is take a look at all these and see which one has a three star trait stick them over here and then press transfer sometimes these metal transferring thing is a bit rigged up <laughs> so yeah if you transfer the traits and you don't get the three star trait that you want you can use your rainbow diamonds to try again you can use up to 15 but the thing with this game is even when you exceed the last amount of transfer that you can get sometimes it's not guaranteed so it's really just rng and luck i would like to mention that there are also transfer medals which you can get transfer medals you can get from maybe sometimes they give it out on the banners summons or doing challenge battles so you need to at least rank top 5000 to be able to get these transfer medals but these transfer medals are more or less guaranteed that you get a three star trait there's one thing that i wish i didn't do when i first started the game was selling medals i used to think that these medals over here took up so much space that i sold a lot of them and in the end, there were medals that I really needed and I don't have anymore because I sold them. So keep as much as you can in case you do need them later on in the future. One thing I didn't realize I could do to also get Rainbow Diamonds on here is the solo mission. So in order to get to the solo mission, you can go ahead and press on the battle right here. It'll come up with like three options. So if you're like new, new, I believe you don't unlock, you know, solo missions until rank three. But you can go ahead and click over here on the solo mission tab. And it will bring you up to this page with three tabs. Okay, so with the solo mission, when you complete it the first time, you will be rewarded three rainbow diamonds. And also in the missions, once you complete one of the solo mission you will also be rewarded with one more rainbow diamond so that totals up to four rainbow diamonds and you can go ahead and slowly finish these off over here in the solo mission and you will be able to get some rainbow diamonds if you want but keep in mind that you have to follow exactly all of the conditions of the missions to be able to get the rainbow diamonds so in order to find out what the missions are, click on the treasure chest icon right over here. And it will bring up the quest detail and it will tell you what you have to do to be able to completely clear the mission. You can go ahead and do the normal missions first and then click over here and start over doing the hard missions. Of course, as always, click on the chest icon to read the conditions that you have to meet to be able to get the gems and that's about it on the solo missions there's also a practice area where you can also click on here to go ahead and do these two but these do not um reward the same amount of um rainbow diamonds i think it only gives you one if i'm not mistaken um let me actually see so yeah you only get one rainbow diamonds from completing these practice missions but rainbow diamonds is still rainbow diamonds so it's still best if you also complete these practice missions and just like the episode story mode missions you can also do the hard mode of these practice missions to be able to also get the rainbow diamonds from here now if you're out of exp orbs you can twice a day do survival 100 to level up your characters okay so i'm gonna pick like a random level one character or something here to show you guys um i guess i'm gonna do there's like a few i haven't leveled up yet either um i'll pick only luffy all right so with this survival 100 you have to fight a hundred enemies okay it's pretty annoying because you know as level one character and if you don't have any medals equipped it's gonna be a little bit harder to get but it's all right it doesn't really matter you know how many characters you um not how many characters but how many enemies you defeated you will still get some exp points 
So you can do that. They also give you EXP orbs if and only if you have completed the Survival 100 for the certain character. Um, otherwise, you know, you would just get experience doing so. But as you can see over here, they have a list of first time bonuses. So 100 enemies give you this much extra experience. And I only have 8, I mean 30 enemies KO'd. So this is my reward. So I went from level 1 to level 26. It is like a little bit slower if you don't have the EXP orbs. So down here, you can see that it takes 12 hours to recover one unless you do this over here and use these survival 100 challenge tickets to refresh your survival 100 game mode you can get these in the exchange shop daily also so keep that in mind if you want to train like a few other characters in one day but the next thing that you can do that i didn't know is 60 second battles so 60 second battles you can get bounty coins which really isn't much i wouldn't really recommend this option to farm some bounty coins but here's the thing with 60 second battle you can get whichever character you want metal fragments in 60 second battles so as you can see they have hard mode normal mode and very hard mode which you have to fight for other enemies but if you're really just farming for metal fragments you can go ahead and just do normal mode like i usually do and for whichever character metal fragments that you want to get you can go ahead and select them all right so the objects of 60 second battle is basically just to cap these two flags over here and when you complete 60 second battle you get three fragments of the character i mean i know it's not much but it does cost three fragments to craft one metal he's about to hit me ain't he or just let me cap <laughs> but yeah it takes three fragments to create one metal so you can do this you know a few times and gather up the fragments and then go ahead and upgrade that certain unit metals that you have selected all right as you can see here i got Three metal fragments like I said previously and it will be in your crafting metal box. And just like Survival 100, you can also use these tickets to refresh your little metal chances, I guess, whatever you call them, times left. But you, however, cannot get these tickets from doing, I mean, from the exchange shop. You probably get these from maybe like missions and such. So try to hold on to these and only use them if you really need to. So one of the important thing that you should do as a new player or even as a free to play player is completing the weekly and daily mission. So to get there, you can click on the little daily button over here. It'll bring you up to this and click on mission. So in here, you get four tabs of missions that you can possibly do. Daily, weekly, normal, and the event missions. The normal missions is just basically you can just finish these, you know, as you go through the game. You know, you don't really have to focus too much on here or anything. And the event missions is whenever Bandai releases a certain event, they will have these over here. And it probably is important to do these also if you can, because they do give out like a good amount of rewards. Okay, so if you take a look at the weekly mission tabs over here, you can see all of the challenges they want you to do. Doing weekly missions is pretty important for like free to play players and new players because getting resources is pretty hard in a way in this game so just do whatever these weekly missions tell you to do and you can get skill orbs to level up your character's skill boost one orbs to boost your characters and yeah just focus on the weekly missions if you're new 
Okay, so I know this is like a no-brainer for like a lot of us veteran players and everything, but when I first started and coming from like a gacha game that has like a stamina system like Bleach Brave Souls, I didn't know that you could play this game <laughs> when you have no treasure chances left. So back then, I used to just stop playing this game when I ran out of treasure chances and everything. And yeah, that's like a big rookie mistake. And I do know a few people that probably don't know this and you've been playing the game for a while. So yeah, you guys, you can still play league matches even when you're out of treasure chances, okay? And here I will show you that right now. Okay, so don't mind that stupid ass screen. I used to think that means you can't play, but they're just trying to make you buy something. But there you go. I can still start a game even with no treasure chances. So another mistake that I have made as a beginner player was not really focusing on my character supports. Character supports will be very, very, very important for you to be able to climb the league ranks. So I am going to show you ways to increase your support percentage. Okay, so if you click on the character upgrade button down here below, it will bring you up to this page. You can click on edit party and you will be brought here. You have five slots to put a team. So you can do like a red team, a green team, a blue team, whatever it is. Um, I will be starting with a fresh party so I can, you know, show you guys how this all works and how, you know, your support percentage goes up when you equip characters. So if you look below, you will notice that you have 10 slots available to equip support characters to a team. If you're new, you won't unlock all of these slots until you're at least rank 14. So for your supports, I would advise you to use whatever color it is that corresponds to your team. So right now I am using a blue team. So of course, it will be best if I equip characters that are blue. It is also advice that you use characters that are level 100. So let's say you have a four star character, but he is level 60. And you have a three star character over here that is level 100 instead. If you're new, go ahead and work on those three, three, two three star characters first because having a level 100 character is a lot better than ha using a character that isn't maxed out for your supports. So quickly, I am going to show you what difference it makes if you use a character support that is a different color from your team. I mean, it doesn't make too much of a difference, but it makes a difference, okay? Like, I don't know, really don't have to explain it, but okay. I am going to be using this level 100 white beard really quickly, for example. Okay, so putting him into my support will bring me up to 13.4%, but that is because I have metals equipped on him. So to increase your support percentage, equipping metals will help out quite a lot. I have 9 star metals equipped on all 3 slots. 9 star metals will raise up your percentage a lot more, but if you're new, it doesn't matter. You know, you can use like lower upgraded metals, but just slowly work on getting 9 star metals. The metals that you equip on your support characters doesn't matter. Like the traits, whatever the traits is in here, doesn't matter what the trait is. As long as the metal equips on your support is at 9 stars, your percentage will go up. Equipping a green character gives me 13.4%. So now let's switch to a blue character really quickly. Um... So if I equip it here, it will bring my percentage up to 16.1%. So it's a 3% difference that you can get. I know it's not a lot, but it adds up eventually. So just make sure if you can use the same color supports and work on equipping metals 
two that support character also. I'm gonna quickly equip all my slots with the same color supports really quickly and I'll be back. I also forgot to mention here, if you click on the middle tab over here, you can filter out your character so you don't have to like really scroll through everything. So you go in the filter stat tab, you can filter it by the color, the grade of the character, which doesn't really matter. I just filter by the color so I can just equip my supports really quickly. Right here, it will show you all the colors of the support characters. Okay, so my team is fully equipped with character with the same color supports and now I will tell you why it is important to use level 100 character versus level 60. So if you look at the bottom over here at the character effects, you can go ahead and click on that. It will bring you up to this page which is character tags. So the maximum tags you can get to activate is having six characters equipped. So let's just click on the attacker one really quickly. So when I have six, six character equipped, I get an extra effect for my team. This character effect attacker, I get a 200 increase attack and a 5% critical damage increase. These tags are pretty important. So the tags that I think are probably the most important to try and work on would be these. This is the attacker one, new worlds, new worlds, um, it gives you a 15% damage increase to the element that you're weak against. If you're using blue, you're weak against green, so you would do a little bit more damage to green characters. Um, Straw Hat Pirates is also a good tag to work on. It gives you a 30% crit damage reduction. If you are running a Defender team that has damage reduction, I would say work on zone and grand line to use as your tag. And one way to find out which character in your box has which tag. Let's say you want to build a team with the zone tag. So you just click on the filter button and it will come up with the list of all the characters that has that tag. I actually have my filter on still. Okay, so it'll just come up with all the list of characters with that tag and you can work on your supports according to this. Your character effects just depends on what team you're trying to build. So if you're an attacker base, focus on having attacker and straw hat pirates and the new world tags, which is quite important. Anything else would be just a little bit extra. One way to view what a certain character has for their tags is you can go on their character screen and you can click on this button over here and it will come up with a list of all the tags that the character has equipped so if you want to see what tags the character have that you you want to start building or want to start working on or want to start six starring you can go to the character page and take a look at this so boosting up your character will also bring up your support percentage. So I will be using my 4 star ulti as an example to show you how to boost a character. So all you have to do is click on your character that you want to boost. On the right side you will see the character boost button. Just click on this. So to boost one a character you can just if you have enough materials you can go ahead and click over here press OK to boost. You know, you guys have it a lot easier than us now since back then we had to literally click this one by one by one. To boost two, you need boost two orbs, of course. Um, you can get these from doing challenge battles. Boost one, you get those from just doing weekly missions. So it's like I said before, it's important to do your weekly missions. Leveling up a character skill over here to level 5 will also boost up your support percentage a little bit. These skill orbs and everything, you can get them from doing weekly missions. Okay, so we're going to bring it back to talking about medals. When I was a beginner player, I either probably didn't use medals at all or I use medals that just doesn't make sense with each other. So we're going to be 
talking about putting together the right type of metals and you will see that equipping the correct type of metals according to you know your character it will actually make a huge difference okay so we're back over here on this metal screen and so if you scroll down a little bit to the save set one over here you can go ahead and you know whichever metal you build you can just stick it in here so that if you want to equip it to your character you can easily do that without having to like scroll through okay so basically with metals you want to build metals that work with each other and what i mean with that is you will want to build metals that have um the same tags with each other Metal tags give like an extra effect like skill 1 and 2 cooldown, capture speed and things like that and trust me it will help a little bit in your league matches. So I'm going to be using a Luffy set as an example to show you guys. So this is the Luffy set. This is actually a pretty like universal Luffy set for defenders. I mean I don't know why the fuck I said defenders. This is a pretty universal luffy set that you can use on attackers and you will see like a lot of people running this set on attackers so if you click on this tag button over here as you can see mine is all highlighted in orange that means that every one of these metals have the same tags with each other so that's good you can always click on the certain tag to see what it gives this one gives a skill one cooldown at 20% and that's only if you have three metals that have the same tag. So keep that in mind. You usually won't be able to get a triple effect unless your character is level 100. Okay, so we're gonna look at the trades really quickly. So you can try to work on your characters. So with... I would say with attackers, usually attack and HP works well with them, but then you also have to look at the trait to see, you know, what will work better. But usually for attackers, attack and HP. Also, do keep in mind that certain like attack or whether you go attack or defense or HP, it caps out at 70%. Okay, so let's take a look at this luffy set that i already have saved up and i built this for you know an attacker so if you scroll down here i have 66 percent attack already it does cap out at 70 percent so if you already have 70 percent attack or hp or defense and you use a metal that has another 14 percent it wouldn't do anything else for you you can always stick in the transfer metals that gives those a little fixed attack like you know one extra 160 attack or extra hp or defense but that's the only thing you can do so make sure you don't waste your time building up a set if you already have something capped out if you want to look for metals that have a certain tag you can always filter it out by going up here to the one in the middle right here click on your filter and if you scroll down they will show you all the tags that is available in certain metals so if you want to let's say build a luffy tag i mean a luffy metal set and so you have like a whole shit ton of freaking metals you can just what i usually do i mean this is a dress rosa set with the luffy so i just click on dress rosa and it will come up with like all the metals that has the dress rosa tag so if you're looking for that uh, specific tag to build your metals go ahead and click on that to filter everything out so there is something that i see most beginners player do and you shouldn't do is putting the wrong type of metal with a trait that doesn't correspond with a character and what i mean about that is all right here take a look at this okay so I'm over here on my transfer metal screen with all the transfer metals and let's see um okay let's take this metal for example so this metal specifically says it's for Kozuki clan servant so what I see a lot of people doing is they use this metal and they place it on a character that do not have this tag this 
effect will not work if the character do not have this certain tag. So you're you over here using this metal on a character, let's just say a Straw Hat Pirates. And you put it on him and you're probably going to wonder why it doesn't work. But that's because he's not a Kozuki clan. He's freaking Straw Hat Pirates. So don't do that. Remember to pay attention to your medals. You can always name them your set so you don't get confused I guess but don't put metal with a trait that doesn't work with your character and the last tip that I would really want to you guys to focus on is resource management OPBR is like pretty hard to gather up resources and we're not talking about like you know of course like they do be giving out rainbow diamonds and such but it is pretty hard to get like resources like for example let's talk about like the boots one orbs you can only usually get those through like doing missions like weeklies and such and boost two orbs you get them by doing challenge battles of course you do get them from doing like missions too but you really don't get a lot so you have to like really save up on um your resources and such like i know a lot of you guys want to use your freaking boost orbs right away as soon as you like pull a character or whatever but i would say focus mainly on a character that you would want to main first before you know using them on every freaking character that you do pull um rainbow diamonds though like i know it's so fucking tempting every time they release a banner but you have to have the mindset of like, do I really need this freaking character or not, okay? Because I know everybody, some people always want to pull on every freaking thing there is as soon as they come. But you have to think about like the pros and cons of it. Like if you're a free to play player, like can I really afford to use my freaking rainbow diamonds on shit like this? Especially step up characters, okay? Bounty fest characters, I mean... They're strong and everything, but 750 for the most part to get like a guaranteed bounty fest character. And if you have like shit luck like me, yeah, you probably can always wait until they actually have like a banner where the bounty fest character is like more guaranteed or whatever it may be. I don't know, but <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I see like a lot of people use up their rainbow diamonds so freaking quickly and it's just it just makes me sad okay because bandai the ga this game really is just freaking power creep they release a good ass unit and then something better comes that makes the unit they just released obsolete and yeah if you're like a free to play player you really 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 have to like figure out you know how to manage your rainbow diamonds and everything like that because i don't know i mean even if you're not free to play this game is not cheap all right so yeah use your resources wisely that goes for like the freaking gold frags and everything too and you can have if you use your resources wisely or your gems wisely you'll be able to save up a lot more than you know you can think of and be able to pull on characters that actually are worth it and yeah you guys that's all for this video i hope these tips help you as a beginner player and if it did go ahead and give this video a like and if you haven't subscribed if you're new here go ahead and press on that subscribe button and i will see you guys in the next video bye